ladies and gentlemen, there has been an epidemic of late. Something insane has been happening. The corn is disappearing. Someone has flooped the pig. Yeah, uh, so this dude, Moon, dropped a video. Where are the corn stars today? Uh, because there has been this crazy situation going on where a lot of them are disappearing and dying in, like, horrifying ways. Uh, a lot of people just vanish. A lot of people disappear only to turn up later somewhere else. And a lot of people just die. Uh, it's actually kind of weird and, and awfully scary. So we're jumping down this rabbit hole. Uh, we're going to see where this goes. Uh, listen, even though I'm, I may be a gooner, this is not healthy, okay? The, the, the addiction shit is not good and not healthy and not kosher, all right? Guys, get, touch some grass. The only corn I worship is the blood god. Let's see what we got. A disturbing pattern has emerged in the adult film industry. Oh. Young stars with their whole lives ahead of them have drifted. Dude, I'm, they went into porn. Their whole lives are not ahead of them, right? Like, I feel like, and I'm not saying this like in a mean way, but once you hit 35, what are you going to do? What do you mean, huh? The top of the rails gone missing or even died. Holy shit, this is gonna be crazy. No! At least five of these tragedies in the past three months. What? Brother! What's going so terribly wrong within the industry to lead to this? I mean, listen. <laughs> I have specu- You know, let's see what his speculations are before we, uh, before we, uh, get into cancellation territory. And how is this industry destroying society as a whole? Well, let's find out where these formerly acclaimed adult film stars are today. You see, Emily Willis was one, I have no idea who this is. one of the few examples of a success story in adult film. And I really? Few examples of success stories? I know a lot of success stories in adult film. What? This went dark quick. Too sad, I'm out. Oh, God. Her early life reads like the dream of anyone looking to make their way into the industry. While details about her life are shaky, it seems like lots of stars she began with nothing. Growing up in a small village in Utah, Emily was a quiet, introverted girl growing up. She right. took a low profile during high school, moving out to San Diego to try and build a life for herself. But after some short-lived jobs and sales that didn't work out, Emily was broke. She had no money and nothing to do. It's so wild. Uh, how many people go into porn as a first choice? Or whilst living in one of the most expensive places in America. But then suddenly, at the age of 18, Emily was swiping through Tinder, matching with different guys, uh -oh. until she would meet a man called Andre Garcia, who she began to date shortly after. All but right. this was far from any fairy tale romance story, and it wasn't just a regular date, because uh... Garcia is now known as one of the most infamous men behind girls. Oh, God. Sentenced to 20 years for tricking and forcing women to... What? He was a monster. What the? Sinister website, which acted as just one of many tube sites online. Dude, because a lot of these um, porn sites that aren't actually regulated are... Um, they would meet up with people, film them, and then upload that to their own porn site. Oh, that's fucked up. Holy shit. Garcia and his colleagues would trick and coerce women into appearing in adult videos, which they told them would only ever be sold as DVDs outside of the country. Sometimes they would offer young girls work as models, only to later force them into doing nude videos instead. They even hired another young woman to convince potential victims to go along with it. Oh my god, this is- this is awful! The lore is going crazy right now, dude. I did not think we were going to be doing porn lore today. I don't know how you convinced me into this one. Figuring that that would seem more trustworthy. Emily was just one of the many girls they exploited, but her story went much further than most of ah! the others. Her videos proved immensely popular on the site, and soon enough, she was receiving offers from all sorts of different producers to star in their videos. It's crazy. It's like an actual snowball. Th that dude was just Valentino IRL. She ends up getting popular and making good money, and then it just snowballs into into torture. She needed money, and now she just sees it as a success path. Slanesh lore is going crazy, dude. Honestly. It wasn't always easy. Emily's family were distraught when they learned about her new career. And it I mean, I get it completely destroyed their family relationship for years, as you can imagine. But on the surface, it seemed like everything was going well. Ah, uh, dude, the surface, the surface, the surface is just what they want you to see. Never trust a YouTuber, never trust an influencer. This is how the industry tricks- Whatever they're showing you is what they want you to see, all right? Th this industry is fucked up. If you think YouTube is fucked up, you don't think, you don't think porn industries are fucked up? ...women into joining it in the first place. Dude, YouTube, YouTube. It's a wholesome platform where anyone can make content that they want. Except it's not. It's literally a, a cursed ecosystem. If you think YouTube has illegal crazy shit, then you don't think these porn sites are literally just a million times worse? 
and how it tricks young men into thinking it's acceptable to watch. Everything seems great on the surface until you find out some very nasty sinister consequences, oh, a side shit. of the industry nobody wants you to know. As yeah, everyone just wants to think that it's just people having fun on videos and you're having fun and they're having fun and it's all wholesome. Ah. Emily would soon find out. After this, Emily would soon star in over 700 films over the course of her career. Oh my god, it's a lot! For which she won multiple awards and became one of the Let's most go. popular actresses on the internet. But more than that, Emily even began making a career outside of the industry. And yeah, because a lot of uh, porn stars see their future right now as no longer doing porn, just doing softcore shit on OnlyFans, let's say, and uh, and then collabing with people and making their own brand, you know, becoming a Twitch streamer, let's say. Branched out into other online spaces. She even went on the Sidemen's real life Tinder video. Hey, yeah, you were right, chat. Which gained over 56 million views. I mean, she didn't make a penny from that, but not the point. But behind the scenes of all of these vlogs, all of these videos, all of this money and uh -oh, fame uh -oh. was a gnawing mental health problem, a nagging voice inside of her. You see, Emily was- right, Good, good. Thank you for the armchair, armchair psychology, Mr. Moon. But yeah, no, but the idea is like, everything always feels like it's doing well. It all looks like it's it's going wholesomely on the surface. Everything's going well. You're making money. You're famous. People are people know who you are. Her family life was destroyed. Her private life was destroyed. Her relationships are probably all going to take a massive strain because of this shit. She's constantly in a state of aging and falling off and shit like that and it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare was dealing with terrible addiction problems. Surrounded by young people working for fast money, it's inevitable that these people will encounter drugs at some point. But eventually, the lifestyle of being in this industry and being swept into this line of work oh. got far too much for her to bear. Oh god, dude, no, no. So she retired from making videos at just 23 years old. A good move, but the damage it All did right. was starting to take a toll. All right. 23, you're free. You have a life. Do something else. Come on, come on. As unfortunately, the downward spiral. You made a crazy amount of money. Crazy amount of money. Or that that industry center into couldn't be reversed. And two years later, on February the 5th oh, of 2024. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. I did not think I would act. Because I feel bad for her, right? A, a lot of people out there, they'll be like, ah, oh, she's a whore. Fuck her. That's such a terrible mentality. She was forced into this position because she had no money and, and she fell in too deep with the wrong people and she was manipulated and yes she ended up wanting it herself because that's where she saw success from but god dude oh god no everything changed and when emily was tragically admitted to critical care at a california hospital after suffering from a heart attack just a week after entering a rehab facility this happened because that's drug induced for sure right oh no that's she overdosed fuck she had overdosed, which put her in a coma for two months. And despite waking up recently, doctors don't believe she'll ever fully recover. Oh Who my god, dude. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare what what becoming famous does to someone overnight, especially in the sex industry. Hopefully she does. And now this might seem like a very tragic but isolated incident. However, unfortunately- uh, No, this sounds like a very unfortunately common incident. Oh. It's an increasingly common story within the industry. You see, of course, we all know these sites, the people making these videos, and the production companies behind them are always exploitative. Yeah, they're all, they're all corrupt. But that's every company, especially the, the sexual ones, right? Young unstable people looking for quick money can use it as a crush to support a fast lifestyle. Instant fame, success, and money and validation that destroys you morally later on. Meanwhile, there's plenty of people and companies eager to exploit their fleecing popularity before moving on to the next victim. But with the rise of the internet... Alright, I'm gonna make a very off-color joke, so if you don't want to hear it, close your ears. And uh, if you want to clip it for Twitter, please don't. Who do you think has sucked more dicks? Professional porn star of 700 videos or Mike Malak, Milgan Paul's best friend. Listen, I'm just I'm just putting the question out there. I'm not making any statements. I'm just asking the question and uh, drop your response in the comments below. To exploit their fleecing popularity before moving on to the next victim. But with the rise of the internet and the massive explosion of tube sites, it's all gotten so much worse. The tube sites sell themselves as offering a kind of freedom and empowerment for the performers in the videos. But in actuality, yeah. they've only made things far more competitive and cutthroat for people looking to enter the industry. I mean, that's not necessarily true. I mean, it definitely makes it more competitive and cutthroat, but it makes it much more accessible. That's, that's really a not fair take. That's like saying YouTube is unfair to video producers because now there are way more people making videos and uploading them to the internet. That's a really shitty point, I'm not gonna lie. You see, the reason why it's, uh, 
it's har horrible is because these platforms will abuse you and and force you into situations that you don't want to be in will coerce you and convince you to to join parties and join uh conventions and do things that may make you uncomfortable put you with the wrong people get you have to have you taking the wrong drugs and then you're making the wrong decisions it's niji sanji with more power uh it's not the competition that's ruining it for people what the sheer amount of choice in videos on these platforms mean women rarely get a chance to make a name for themselves. The huh? And, be and before these sites? D dude, tell me, tell me, did the motel hooker that you met up with, uh, did, did she make a name for herself? Uh, uh, no, she didn't, okay? <laughs> because she didn't have the internet at all! It's not a good argument. The majority star in just two or three videos before giving it up. For the you say it like it's such a sad thing. Why is this such a sad thing? The little pay they do receive, they've traded their privacy and their dignity. But that that's the industry. That's why the industry is cursed. The industry is cursed. Because, unfortunately, a lot of people end up do trading their dignity for stuff. But, that, but in turn, they make a lot of money. That's the trade-off. I don't know. And some people really don't mind. <laughs> Which is interesting. Not for me, but some people don't mind. The videos they are in rarely get removed from the internet and stick around forever. Why is he saying this like it's a specialized porn thing? Dude, you say it. Dude, Twitch is hentai. The, the, the critically acclaimed music video that has gotten me canceled on Twitter dozens of times. That will also always be around on the internet, even though the original is gone because YouTube took it down. Okay? So they get uploaded over and over again, showing one of the most intimate acts to the entire world repeatedly for an audience of millions. If it's done with consent, though, they are an adult that did it, okay? Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions, don't make the porn sites the bad guys when the people that are filming it and uploading it are being seen by lots of people, right? Isn't that, isn't that a weird argument? However, for the majority... Like, I, it's a, I think that it's a terrible decision that anyone should make. And, uh, and God, I'm not going to judge someone that's in a state of desperation that needs money, all right? I'm not going to sit here and judge them. But, my guy, it's not a good decision, period. Unless you feel like it's worth it for the money, right? Also, <laughs> did you put your logo on someone else's logo? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> performers that don't make it through the industry. There are a few people who have a different story. One of them is the infamous Mia Khalifa. I do not like this lady, holy shit. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> not gonna lie. Fleeing her home country of Lebanon as a child and moving to the United States, Khalifa's life was relatively ordinary at first. After graduating high school, she went to college to study art, whilst working as a waitress and a model on the side. But when she was 21, she was approached to star in adult films, which almost overnight brought her huge fame and success, if you want to put it that way. I mean, she made a crazy amount of money and became really famous based on decisions that she herself made. She's ultimately going to regret those decisions, but uh, she made them. I am just loving the success and loving everything that I've gotten because of it. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. You love the success and you keep going and keep going and keep going. And I say that because the way she gained fame and success was probably done in one of the worst ways possible. If it's the one I'm thinking of, that's insane. It's the hijab one. You see, in one of her first... Oh god, dude, I remember this. Oh god, this was a whole controversy because she used to film porn videos in like Muslim religious headgear. Oh my god, dude. Plus videos. Khalifa and her co-star were wearing hijabs and that became its whole own news story. Yeah, that, that's, that became like a whole ass trend out there. And uh, apparently she got a lot of hate for this, bro. Oh god, dude, they wanted to execute her in her home country for this shit. Oh my god. Us videos. Khalifa and her co-star were wearing hijabs, and that became its whole own news story. Death threats and anger came flooding in from across the Middle East, while news- Threatened by ISIS, holy shit. Outlets like CNN and the Washington Post caught on and almost instantly made her a household name. And overnight, she became the most searched for name on the most popular websites. Damn. Mrs. Time in the industry was short, and she clearly got the paycheck she was looking for. Despite saying that she was only paid $12,000 over the course of her career- oh, That's bullshit, holy fuck, that's a lie. What? <laughs> the companies who made her videos. She did not expect that. I mean, she was definitely using a religious garb in a sexual context. What was? What did she expect? She came from Lebanon. Okay, she she knew that it would not fly 
with her homies, okay? <laughs> like, let's be real here. She did not expect that. I mean, you know? I've said that it was at least 10 times that much. Yeah. At least? What? You think she only made $120,000? Are you kidding me? But even in this best case scenario of becoming the most popular star in a round in just a few short videos, Mia still says she has a bunch of regrets. She's described how difficult it has been to shake this reputation, to find a regular job, or to ever- Fuck one dog and you're known as a dog fucker. Lady, you are the most searched porn star in the world. That is your most- that's your claim to fame, and it always will be. Uh, you know? And- and it's gonna haunt you forever. And it will. And, uh, that's unfortunately the consequences of your own actions. But why is she in this video? Is she like gone or something? Like, why is everyone talking about her now? They be taken seriously. I would say that if I had never met that person, I never would have done. I right. never would have done the things that people know me for doing. And I could have just been living life normally, making $18 an hour, hopefully. Somewhere. Yeah, that's the dream. But so why are you doing OnlyFans now, though? Is that still because of that one guy? Or because you ran out of funds, or because you fell off? Like, I'm just just curious. Can't feel too sorry for her. I mean, it's hard to distance yourself from the industry that brought you your fame, especially when you're still using the same false name that most people know you by. Her criticism- Dude, yeah, th true, use a different name! It's like she wants the fame, but she doesn't want the reputation. G g lady! Some of the industry rings hollow when she still runs an OnlyFans and pro- Yeah. Dude, th uh, you gotta stop with this. Bro, you can't be out here doing... <laughs> Profits of the right. fame she made from it. Simply working as an actor in any way in the industry has permanent consequences. Even You don't think if she decided to go to school and try to get a law degree, she would be able to... She wouldn't be able to? She absolutely would be able to. Absolutely. But she's literally still using this for her profit. And then she talks about how it ruined her life. <laughs> Hello? And with all of the fame and money that Mia got from her short lived career, it will never buy back her privacy or remove all of the content that still continues to haunt her today. For most actresses and actors though, they get far less money and fame and still have to deal with all of the same consequences. They can't live off a few months work for the rest of their lives by appearing on podcasts. They have to get real jobs. Something that a career in the industry makes a lot harder if it ever gets out. There are other problems that such a career can make for you, even though society is still squeamish about discussing it. Studies I mean, society is pretty on top of discussing it these days have shown time and time again that for many people out there having a large number of partners I mean, what does this have to i want to i want to know where these porn stars are dying and getting killed and disappearing okay i, I don't need advice on why addictions and goonery is not actually healthy for a relationship that's pretty pretty based and and logical and we know that before marriage can sometimes make it more likely that you will actually get divorced of course this yeah I'm, I'm just saving myself for marriage guys that's why I, uh, I, I, I that's why my whole chat's versions they're all saving themselves for marriage this is an ironclad rule base, and it doesn't base. mean that your past determines your future but it is still a social pattern even taking in Mia Khalifa's string of divorces into account seems to prove the point especially if you have this content out there on the internet I mean commodifying your past relationships and selling intimacy as a product is always going to be worse for your future happiness yeah, probably, but that's the decision that was made. I, like, why are all these... Look, if someone's act, if this happens to someone against their will, then it is literally a travesty. It is a nightmare, and it should be eviscerated, all right? It's obviously terrible. But this is the decision that was made by them. And again, I'm not saying that they didn't have an awkward situation to do that, but they literally decided to do this. And especially terrible if you ever get married and the guy finds out. Even what do you mean, finds out? You're gonna marry someone and not tell them that you did this? Then you deserve him to find out and dump you. What the fuck? You're gonna marry someone and then two years into marriage, you'll find out that she was a porn star? What the fuck? You tell him everything. That's what marriage is. It's a partnership. You, you fucking open up completely. What are you doing? Even though this is a harsh truth for serial dating- BASED BARNEY STINSON MOMENT! Society expects and celebrates- By the way, I've been cancelled for saying Barney Stinson's a great character. Just saying, so I'm gonna say it again. Today, it doesn't make it any less true. It's less clear whether simply watching adult films has the same effect though. We at least know that it can have a negative effect for people already in serious relationships. Whether it makes a difference beforehand is still kind of up in the air, but you can imagine it probably would. I mean, it probably would. Let's be real. It probably would. It does uh, definitely commodify, 
commodify intimacy. Uh, actual intimate moment will just be less exciting for you if you are used to that shit. It probably would. Like, let's be real. But as we'll soon find out, this may be the least concerning problems that people in the industry face. It can be easy to focus solely on women in the industry. It's inevitably what most of the actual films are focused on. Oh, let's go. Gender equality. Gender equality. We're talking about a, a male voice actor. Um, voice actor. <laughs> Porn star. <laughs> They're the big names that draw the biggest audiences, but tons of the same problems that women face are equally challenging for men as well. Bill right. Bailey was just one of those male stars. I have never heard of him. To begin with, making it as a man in the industry is more harder than you'd think. The uh, yeah! Get it harder than you think? Harder, get it harder than, do you get it? Do you get it harder than you think? The pressures to perform under harsh lighting for hours at a time is- Yeah, it's cause of the lighting! Oh man! Performing under that lighting, guys? Aw, oh, dude. It's something that most people could ever deal with. The use of performance enhancers like Viagra is so widespread, it's almost expected. But- Uh, yeah. You don't want it to be a two-pump chump, and then he then he's out of commission for the next three hours. Those who can deal with the pressure and make a name for themselves can often have far longer careers than women. Starring in lots of videos, Bill Bailey was one of the- Because you only need them for their dick, and you don't need them for their anything else. I'm just saying. It's a tough road out there. These men appearing in over 2,000 videos across his career. Vi Holy shit! Viagra isn't the only drug that gets abused in the industry. The use of other stimulants like amphetamines are very common. That's true. They they gotta go fucking crazy with drugs to keep these people as active as they can, right? That's honestly crazy. As well as heavy alcohol use to deal with this lifestyle. And it was this vice that would lead to Bill's tragic death. Oh you my see, god. Dude, they literally pumped him full of drugs for the sake of the... For the sake of uh, his performance. Oh my god, dude. ...an industry expo in early March of 2019. Dude, I mean, ultimately, they just, they're, they're just there for the killer shot, right? They, they just want the killer shot. ...people reported seeing Bill drinking heavily throughout the day. Later that night, while staying in a fourth floor apartment with his girlfriend, Bill fell over the handrail of his balcony and plummeted four stories to the ground. Oh my god. It wasn't even because of, like, an overdose. Holy crap. Dude, he's like a breeding bull. They just... Pump him full of shit and, and have him go wild. And local reports claim that he was involved in some kind of argument before the incident. But authorities ruled that there was no foul play involved. Obviously though, male stars working within the industry are a very small group compared to all of the men that are affected by it. However tragic the performance's stories might be, the real changes to society come from mass consumption by the audience and the effects it has on them. I feel like a lot of people do get through this industry healthy. Um, but unfortunately, a lot don't. It's always easy to look at a few fringe examples and, and say that everyone that goes through this, uh, this industry is fucked. But uh, the reality is, it's not everybody. It is going to be more nuanced than that. Um, and uh, even, though, even though it is more nuanced, a lot of people still do definitely regret it. Like the subject of our next story, Jenny Lee. I have no idea who these people are. Like most of the people we've talked about today, Jenny came from humble beginnings. It's he, she grew up in Clarksville, a small city in Tennessee, before beginning her career as a model, then as an adult film star. Her looks and her personality quickly caught on in the industry, getting her work in over 100 films to date. From 2003 Jeez. to 2009, Jenny made a name for herself, rising up the ranks and becoming incredibly popular with fans. Even today, over a decade after she retired, her name is still on the list of top performers on tube sites. And yet despite okay. her work, Jenny got married at just 22 years old. Although rather expectedly, by 2006, she was divorced from her, That's wild. her husband. But the question is, where is she now? Well, it's not really a fairy tale ending. Oh After god, dude, of course not. That's why she's in this video. Trying to leave the industry in 2009, Jenny Lee moved to Vegas to work as a model, but we can gather that her career didn't actually plan out as expected. She was still allegedly appearing in films all the way until 2016, when she appeared to drop off the face of the earth. That was until three years later. Oh? Dutch film crew exploring the tunnels under Las Vegas inexplicably found her oh living there in a vault. What? Was she she was so humiliated by what she went through she literally just became whole, homeless and wanted to just not interact with the world oh my fucking god that's awful Lost network of homeless people the brief interview they conducted with her is shocking to watch but by her own admission she seems kind of okay with how things turned out but uh you know i'm but i'm happy you know i i have everything i need here i have everything i need here imagine preferring that
Imagine preferring that to the industry where you're being showered with love and other fluids. What the fuck? It's thought that between 1,000 and 1,500 people live in the tunnels under Sin City. Jenny describes their life as hard, but that the shared struggles breed a sense of community amongst the other lost people who made their lives underground. Now, of course, there's a bunch of dangers here, from flash floods and sewage to rats, addicts, and extreme temperatures. Not to That's crazy. I can't believe that happened. I can't believe that happened. You mentioned crime. However, since this interview, not much has been known about Jenny's life. She might still be down there, scratching out a living amongst other people who don't judge her for her looks or her background. It should be clear at this point what's going on in the industry. It takes people who are generally already unstable because of their childhoods and lures them in with false money. They trade away their dignity and their privacy, and even if they're successful, the industry will just spit them out a few years later. This has been going on for decades. I feel like this has been going on for as long as time. Uh, pr pr listen, prostitution is literally history's oldest profession, uh, and believe it or not, unfortunately, prostitutes, <laughs> they, you know, their prime is not until they're 80, okay? Their prime is not even until they're 40, and, uh, even if you could, uh, dude, the, the falloff must be tremendous with everyone in the world knowing your history. You can't just get a job teaching at a school after you're a porn star, you know? Like... Luring people in with, and the craziest thing is, the craziest thing is, you see articles constantly coming out of how much money Belle Delphine made on OnlyFans, how much money Amaranth makes on OnlyFans, and like, I feel like a lot of young girls are gonna see that shit, and guys, but mostly girls, are gonna see that shit online and be like, damn, that could be me. I could also be successful and, and collab with Sidemen and David Dobrik and Logan Paul and, and all these, these cool people, you know? And uh, it, it becomes commercialized. And you don't see the dark side of these lives or the after stories of these lives. You don't see any of the epilogue. It looks like it's empowering that they're able to do whatever they want. And, and so often it just it, it cripples people. Now, obviously, not everyone is like that. A lot of people do get through the, uh, the community somewhat unscathed. But I think that's a small percentage Decades, but the question still remains, why is it getting worse now? Websites like OnlyFans and other self-promotion tools claim they're given the power to the performers. Yeah, they, they're big into that. You know, we're gonna give you the power, we're gonna give you the power. We're only taking a tiny cut. I mean, still, they're making billions of dollars, but... And taking it away from a predatory industry, which is a crazy thing to say when these sites are just incentivizing normal, regular people to start becoming online adult stars. And if their claims were actually not just normal, regular people, another thing OnlyFans does is they post about the successes. It's in the contract. This was in my, uh, I did a whole interview with a bunch of girls that were on OnlyFans. Um, and uh, in that interview, they basically told me that it's in the contracts that uh, OnlyFans will public publicize and incentivize people to become OnlyFans creators by showing the successes of other OnlyFans people like they'll say hey she was just a nobody and now she's making a ten thousand dollars a month you know working we wouldn't be seeing the disturbing rise in the casualties instead only fans is one small part of a group of problems that are hitting performers one after another the site essentially and, they, and a lot of people think it's like taking power away from the from the companies you have so many people online that they basically pimp girls out to only fans uh like they'll uh they'll take you in like uh jack doherty or andrew tate or these guys they'll they'll platform a bunch of women and have them start only fans plug their only fans so that people will go to their only fans to pay the money and then they take 50 percent, like actual modern day trafficking pimps and uh and that's a thing now so that's not taking the power away from the companies. That's just putting the power in the hands of people with clout instead. It's the same top 1% bullshit. Actually help carry on the work of the tube sites. So and if you don't succeed, then not only is all your privacy shattered because of this and will this be a crutch for your entire life, but you also didn't even make money out of it. So dude, make, make a good decision. Don't make a bad decision. Think clearly, man by creating a single global marketplace. While this might sound liberating, in fact, it only makes the competition far harder for actresses that would have had stable deals with production companies just a decade or two before. In the same way that dating apps have made it far harder for men to find someone by giving people so many different options, it's done the same thing to the adult film industry. Then there's all the problems- Whoa.
what is this lineup? The people working in the industry already faced that have only gotten worse. There may not even be that many more substance abuse issues than there were five years ago, but the risks today are far greater. New synthetic drugs, which are both far more potent and far more deadly, have flooded the market. And a ah, shit, dude. It literally never ends. It literally never ends. You used to numb the pain and fill the dad-shaped hole left in these stars. Ah, and as their drugs get more- Not the dad-shaped hole. More tainted. They need higher doses. To even live with their lifestyle choices, it's making the lives of these performers far more dangerous. The mental health crisis that the rest of the world is going through is just as bad as in the adult film industry, if not more so. Performers in the industry get PTSD at 70% of the rate of combat veterans. What's the source for this? Wild, bro. It, it's an insane world. It's an insane world with the amount of uh, porn there is on Twitter and on Twitch. You see Elon Musk making these hilarious tweets, dude. Every time I see like these stupid bullshit Elon tweets, it just, it makes me so happy. If you made it to the end, click one of these two videos, which also will definitely get me canceled. See you live on Kick. Stay weird, man.